Christian Wilkins, um, what makes him so difficult to handle? Uh, well, I think the thing that jumps out about Christian is his, uh, his uh, relentless effort towards the football. Um, for a big guy to have that much drive on every play to finish and pursue, it's uniquely special. And uh, not only that, but he's got the full gambit of moves. He understands how offensive linemen play and uh, exploit when you're out of your technique. And he's also a tenacious competitor. So you, you have all that together, you're going to have a pretty special football player. It's a guy like, like him who, you know, there's a history there. Are you on extra alert knowing? No, it's, all, it's, no, it's just football, man. Uh, you know, you, you take it one play at a time. And, uh, I think the thing you look at the most is just try making sure he doesn't beat your competitive nature towards the football, right? Like he's going to make plays down the field if you let him go. So uh, just trying to match his competitive intensity every play. How is the, the run game, you know, the three running backs with you, James, the previous Damian, how has that kind of helped Josh take some of the load off of his shoulders this year? Well, I think – I think when you, you're able to effectively run the ball early, which I, we weren't quite really able to do last week, but Coach stuck to it, um, it, it just takes a – it doesn't become a drop-back fest, right, and, and where defensive line can hunt every play. You're going to have those in the game, and you're going to have times in the game where everyone knows you're in a drop-back type of offense. But, um, you know, every game is dictated differently. Every game plan is different. So – for us, it's just what that week presents, as well as what the game entails, right? You might have a slew of runs you come into the game with, um, but you, you learn that one's working better than the other, so you stick to it. So for us, it's just kind of just trying to be more of a two-dimensional offense rather than a one-dimensional. How do you maintain that balance by you know, having an aggressive approach offensively? To be honest, I just do what I'm told. Uh, we work on it here, and whatever they call on the field, I just go and uh, hope it works out, man. That's a great question, and I wish I had a mapped answer for it, but it's hard to be a philosopher when you really just don't know. The running game can aid in your guys' pass protection, mixing in a few run block opportunities and, and separating those pass block opportunities that last year seemed to be play after play, but now you're mixing in the run a little bit more. How does that help you guys in pass protection, mixing things up? Well, I think it. Uh, I think you answered your question a little bit. To be honest, it's just it's not the whole predictability thing. I mean, there are parts of the game where you understand that it's a passing down, right? So for us, it's just knowing when those when our numbers call in those times to execute. Um, but it just gives the defense maybe something else to think about. That being said, we still have to execute um, because if you don't execute runs, coaches are less likely to call them. So for us, it's just, and you don't put any extra stress on it or on us. You just kind of detail your work throughout the week, and then hopefully that correlates on Sunday. You played Miami three times last year, and they largely have the same group of guys again. What do you remember about those matchups last year and just how physical they were? Yeah, I think that that's the word that sticks out to me is uh, they're very physical. Um, they're tenacious towards the football. Uh, they complement each other very well, right? Their games, their stunts. And, uh, and then when you have one-on-one -on -one matchups, they try to exploit those. So for us, it's just trying to match not only their competitive spirit with good technique and hopefully marrying that together to have a chance to uh, compete on Sunday. A guy comes in like Connor has and plays at the level that he has, particularly in pass protection. What does that mean for you and Dion? Uh, well, I think Connor is one of those guys who, and I've said it a thousand times, came in from a very different system that was asked. He was asked to do a lot of different things than he was here, different techniques that coach uh, has asked. And, you know, he, he really stuck to it. It wasn't, it didn't come naturally to him, but he's a professional and, and he stuck to it. And he's gotten so much better at what coach needs and, and what we all need as, and schematically. And I mean, it's showing he's playing phenomenal football. Uh, and the great thing about Connor is that he'd tell you that there's still a lot to work on. And that's all you want in an offensive lineman is a guy who tries to do everything right and then understands that when he doesn't, there's something to work on. And that's a, that's a blessing and a curse. So uh, to have a guy like that, and not to say we haven't in the past, right? I'm not knocking anyone who's been here. We've had some legitimately good football players here. Um, Connor stepped up and, and was really gelled between Dion and I, not only communication-wise, um, but technique-wise, so I'm very thankful to have him here. 
to downplay anybody in the past, but you mentioned that cohesiveness and gelling together. How is there an example of that with Connor that you've, that you've noticed? No, I, there's no one example you can stick out. Uh, it, it really is just the accumulation of uh, every day's work. Um, you could find dozens a day, and that's what you need, the consistency, and Connor's a consistent football player. Centerpiece of this, this offensive line. You're dealing with a veteran guy in Connor, and then you're dealing with a rookie on the other end. You know, how how has that worked for you? How how has that balanced out for you? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, here in Buffalo, I, I feel like we've had uh, an embarrassment. Speaking of embarrassment of riches, we've had an embarrassment of riches of guys who might not have a starting role here, but have played a lot of football. We have a guy like David Edwards who started and won a Super Bowl. And, and played with Cromer before, so understands the techniques and knows how to play at a high level and has got the tools of the trade and has been very forthcoming with information. Just been really cool to see. And, and he's not the only guy. I mean, you got a guy like Bates who's played hundreds of thousands of snaps at a very high level. So he's got a bunch of guys around him that have made my life a lot easier. And then for me, it's just the, the repetitions and walkthrough and all this stuff. So it, it's been really nice to see him grow. and. Uh, I think you guys all see that he's going to be a very good football player. Um, I, and the nice thing is he also understands that he still has a lot to learn, as we all do. But uh, he's got that hunger to be better and uh, understands that a lot's put on his plate. And he's rising to the occasion. Now he's not going to be perfect, but it's striving to get better every day, which is really cool to see for a rookie who's had some success. Roger, at Roger Saffold at Locker Cleanout last year. It's a bit prophetic and said, you're going to be amazed at how much everybody that was year one with Cromer is going to take this giant leap in just like feeling comfortable with what's asked. It's only three weeks, but have you noticed that? Well, I think it's nice for guys to have another off season with them. Yeah, you know, to just, it's, it's just time on task. It's repetitions. It rarely is a guy going to come in or a player going to come in and immediately get it down, right? Um, we were always comfortable with what he had to say. It was just kind of different some, and, and different facets. So, you know, a guy like Spencer Brown, I, you know, he, he missed all of training camp and OTAs with the back, and this year he had a bunch of, you know, he had some time, and coaches worked with him, and he's, and he's worked. You know, he's, he's really had the fire lit underneath him, and the intrinsic motivation to come out every day, which is one of those cool things. We, we have a bunch of guys right now. That, that love coming to work and understand that there's something to work on every day and, 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 and no one's felt like they've arrived. And the thing for us will be to find a way to, it's easier when you, when you lose, right? To find a way to come in with a fire. And the nice thing is guys come in with this fire every week um, and try to sustain that. Cause there's gonna be ebbs and flows, not only as a team, but personally guys are gonna have bad weeks or bad games or even bad stretches, right? So it's just kind of finding a way to be grounded in your preparation, understanding what you do works. It's just kind of chipping away every day. So I know it's a long-winded answer, not totally answering your question, but um, we're just trying to find something to work on every day and understand that we have, uh, you know, this week an incredible opponent coming in um, that doesn't need any more hype than they already have because they're a very talented football team in all three phases. And if we don't come with the uh, collective, you know, cohesiveness to play a complete game, we, we could get embarrassed. So we're trying not to let that happen. Now we ask skill position players all the time about this, but you know, you bumped heads with a Vic Fangio defense mm -hmm. a few times. So sure. what what do you know about that, and what do you expect uh, out of Vic Fangio? Yeah, I I just I have the utmost respect for Coach Fangio. Like you've said, I've, I've been able to play him in the past. And he, he, what he, he does what he does, and he does it well and understands that um, how to exploit certain offenses. You know, he's not going to be the most exotic at times, but he can be. I mean, it really is one of those, you know, the great defensive coordinators find a marriage between doing what they know works for them, but at the same time coming with a flavor of the week. And in the past, he's done a very good job of that. So for us, it'll be making in-game adjustments trying our best to understand what's going to come. And, uh, and then, may, you know, it's going to be ebbs and flows, so we'll, we'll have to adjust and not panic if, if he gives us something that we weren't expecting.